All right, here we are about set up for a solo play of Confusing Lands. It's set up the same way as a two-player. You have the deck shuffled up. We are going to reveal the top card. This is going to be a shared goal that we are all going after, and by all, I mean myself. So that one is, we're going to look at our handy-dandy scoring conditions. So that is Town Center. Choose a crystal space. Score three points for each village space that is three or fewer spaces from the chosen crystal. There we go. So that's that one. Now what's going to happen is I am going to draw two cards. Now typically in a multiplayer game, I would put one down and then pass one to my opponent. They pass me theirs and I'll lay that in my tableau. In a solo one, I am going to choose one of these, put it down in front of me discard the other, discard this top card, and then take the next one to put in my tableau, and repeat until there's one card left in here, which will give me eight cards in my display. I'm going to be doing this scoring condition. I'm going to be choosing these for either the scoring condition side or their other side. So after my first card is down, there are some placement rules. I need to cover at least one square of a previous card. I cannot cover, cover any scoring conditions, and it cannot be offset such as that. You need to cover the squares completely. Once I have my eight cards, we are going to score the shared goal. Any goals I have up, subtract 10 points for every goal I have showing, and then that is my score. And in a solo player game, they have a chart to see how well you did. So, that being said, let's look at my first couple of cards. So this first one is, I'm going to get one point per square in a row that does not have a scoring goal in it. And this is going to be four points for every river that flows next to, or into mountains. Each of your river spaces scores four points for each mountain space it flows into. So they have an this one already would be worth four points if I leave that showing. But I think I am actually going to go with this one. And let's kind of stick this down here for now. That gets discarded. This one gets discarded. And we grab this top card. So this scoring is eight points. Let's look at our sheet. We'll find it. So this is card 10, which is nice. They you look in 10. For eight points for each of your wolf spaces, that is five or more spaces from any village or other wolf space. So I don't think I'm going to go with this one. I think I'm going to flip this over here. And I have that crystal, and it wants to be within three spaces, hopefully, of that. So if I put that here, one, two, three, it is there. And I'm increasing my row here because it can't have a scoring condition. Or we can offset it there so I can maybe get some other villages close by. We grab our two. So neither one of these has villages in it. So probably not going to necessarily care about that as much. This is going to be four points for every crystal that is in a row or column that doesn't have a crystal and doesn't have a crystal orthogonally or diagonally adjacent to it. And number nine is... Each of your crystal spaces scores two for each mountain space that is exactly four spaces from it. Well, that all sounds pretty interesting, but I think I'm going to grab that scoring condition one because I already have a crystal. So I can't, so I can technically go right there. So this is in a different row and column, different row or column. They're not next to each other. So right now that is four points for each of those. That gets discarded. This gets discarded, and I grab this one. This has quite a few towns, so I might want to see about trying to get that really close to there. Or this is three points for every forest that's in a group of two or bigger. But nope, I'm going to go with this town one. So I could put it there and all those. And then I'm getting my row nice and long. So yeah, I think we're going to go just like that. Now I draw two. I got a town. I got no crystals. 
This one's going to score my lowest scoring goal a second time. And this is three points for every mountain that's on the edge of my thing. So this is already scoring me eight points. That's going to be scoring me one, two, three, 12 points. And that one right now is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which I could extend up some. And I'd have another crystal that would be doing it. I don't think I want to cover up that village. So I think we are going to choose it for this side. And could always place it this way. Don't want to cover up the village. Don't want to put that there. You know what? Let's go ahead and place it thusly. Or do I come down here? You know what, we are actually gonna go down to the bottom to make that row, that column a little bit bigger. Gotta make sure that doesn't get in there. And we can go like that. So this is still not in one of those. I didn't cover any scoring conditions. I've kept that village for that. And we are good. So that was one, two, three, four, five. So we discard that, and then we get this one, I believe. Then I draw two. Yep. Uh, probably not going to do it for that. This has two crystals and a village. So we're going to, well, that's going to cancel that one. That's going to cancel that one. But if we go like that, wait, no, because that's right next to there. So as you can see, this does get tricky. As you're getting more and more, that's still there. Can't cover that up. So I think we're going to I think we're actually going to do that. So those will be canceled, but I'll still have one, two, three of them. I think that's my best bet because this row is getting longer. So now I draw my two. I don't know if I really want any more scoring conditions. Well, this is going to be one point for every mountain, forest, and village. So we have right now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I put that out now, this is for every different symbol around a village. I know I don't want that. That's got a buku amount of crystals, but those ones aren't going to score because they're next to each other. And I, that's going to be next to that one, so that doesn't really matter to me. I think I'm going to get that scoring condition. And let's see if I can do this without canceling a crystal. I could do it that way. That keeps the village even though I'm covering it. Or I could go just like that. Oh, that does cover one of the forests I just counted. I could go there. I leave the scoring out of that row. That's not by anything. We're still good there. All right, so this gets discarded. And I'm down to my final card. So I got a couple of villages and a crystal. Or this one is two points for every open section. That's not going to be worth it. We're going to go this side. And if I go like that, I think I can get my shared one up pretty high and not worry about that crystal being by anything. Yep, so that's what we're going to do. So there is my constructed island, my land. So let's go ahead and total up my shared one. So let's refresh our memory. Shared is choose a crystal space. Score three for each village space that is three or fewer spaces from the chosen crystal. So we're going to choose this crystal. We have one, two, three, four. So we have four villages. So that's going to be 12 for the shared. Let's work our way top to bottom, left to right. So one point for every village, forest, and mountain. So we have one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points for that one. So this is looking at the crystals. Uh, score four points for each crystal space that's neither near nor in the same row column as another crystal space. So that's one, two, three, four, five of those. So that's 20 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that one and that one almost worthwhile. They basically cancel each other out. Since they're both worth negative 10, that was basically worth one and negative one. This is worth my least one, which is nine. So our subtotal there is 18, 30, 50, 61 minus 40, or 61 minus 40 points is a subtotal of 21. Consult our sheet, and it is perplexing. So, probably shouldn't have done that one, but I like that crystal, and there was nothing else beneficial on the other side. Really, it, that's what the interesting thing is. I really thought that this was going to score me a little bit more. I didn't realize I only topped off at nine there, and then I was hoping to get more from that one. So, but that is the solo play of Confusing Lands from Envy Board and Games. It would be appreciated if you would go ahead and give us a like and subscribe down below, leave a comment, share the video, ring the bell, all that fun stuff. And until then, get building.